I'm Bob Duhamel, and today we are going to learn how to use an oscilloscope. I have here an old-time CRT-based analog oscilloscope because I think these are really better for showing how an oscilloscope works. A digital oscilloscope certainly has a lot of advantages over an old analog scope, but when it comes to demonstrating how it works and what it is showing to you, I think an analog scope works a lot better. Then once you understand how it works, you can understand what a digital oscilloscope is telling you. An oscilloscope is simply an analog voltmeter. Here is your typical analog voltmeter. It has a needle attached to an armature, and when you put current through the coil of wire in that armature, it creates a magnetic field which reacts against permanent magnets in the movement, and that causes the armature to rotate and take the needle with it. And there is a spring that controls the movement of the needle, and we get a reading of how much current is going through that armature by how far it deflects. And since we know the resistance of that coil, we can also calibrate this meter in volts. So this analog meter can measure either voltage or current, and with a battery inside can measure resistance. A digital meter is definitely more accurate than an analog meter, but an analog meter does have some advantages. It gives you a visual representation of your measurement that is sometimes more useful than just a display of numbers. And especially if you have a voltage or current that's fluctuating, a digital meter will just give you a hodgepodge of numbers, where an analog meter gives you a needle that you can follow and get a better idea of what's going on. An oscilloscope is an analog voltmeter. Instead of having a mechanical movement that moves a needle, we have a voltage amplifier that goes into a cathode ray tube. That cathode ray tube is sending an electron beam to the screen and sweeping it from left to right, and as you can see, as it goes from left to right rapidly, it makes that line at the bottom of the screen that indicates our voltage level. Unlike a mechanical meter, an oscilloscope does not have numbers on the display. So to tell what voltages we're reading, we have to refer to our voltage base knob and see where it is set. So right now I have it set at 5 volts, which is telling me that each one of these horizontal lines on the screen is 5 volts above the line below it. So now, at the bottom of the screen you see the line, and that is where 0 volts is. Let's measure a voltage and see what happens. I have a 1.5 volt battery here. I'm going to take the black lead from my oscilloscope and connect it to the negative side of the battery. And I'm going to take the red lead and hook it up to the positive side. And watch what happens to the line on the screen. And it jumps up. Well, that's not very high and not very useful. So what can I do? Well, that's 5 volts per division. So we have 0 volts here and 5 volts here. And if we look at these little lines, and the way the scope is set up now, each one of those lines is 1 volt. So what can I do to get a more meaningful reading? I can adjust my voltage base here. So I'm going to set it for 2 volts. Now 1 volt. So there's my 0 volts at the bottom of the screen. And let's try that measurement again. Black lead. Red lead. And now it jumps a little higher because now I have 1 volt per horizontal line. So if we look here, we have 0 volts, 1 volt, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6 volts. Uh, well, this battery should be about 1.58 volts, so that's pretty close. For an analog meter, that's about the kind of reading we expect. So there we have reading a 1.5 volt battery on an oscilloscope. I have some other batteries to check here. Here is a 9 volt battery. Let's put the black lead to the negative and the red lead to the positive and went right off the scale. So what's going on there? Well, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's only 8 volts at the top. It's right off the scale. What can we do? Well, I can just reset my voltage base here to 2 volts per division and there it is. Let's double check our position here before we take a reading. Uh, we have an input coupling switch here, which sets our coupling from DC to ground to AC. We're now set at DC coupling, which means I'm directly connected to the amplifier. I'm going to set this to ground, which makes our input 0 volts. No matter what we're hooked up to, it's now 0 volts. So it looks like our position is good. Let's set it back to DC coupling. And look at what we have here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 volts right on the money. I also have a tiny 12 volt battery here. Let's take a look at that. Black to the negative, red to the positive, and we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 volts. So there we have a nice analog voltmeter. 
And uh, one thing we can do with this is we can have a voltmeter that goes both positive and negative. I'm going to adjust my vertical position and put that right in the middle of the scale. So when this line moves up, it's positive, and when it moves down, it's negative. Let's try that with the 9 volt battery. Black to negative, red to positive, and oops, we're off the scale again. So let's bring this down to 5 volts per division, and I'm going to set this back to ground just to set our position. Every time you change your voltage base, you should double check your ground position. Set that back to DC coupling, and there we have each little division now is 1 volt, because this is 5 volts per division, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's our 9 volts. Now if I reverse the leads, black to positive, and red to negative, now we see negative 9 volts. So let's see if I can do this quickly here. So there's Pa negative 9, positive 9, negative 9, positive 9. So there we have the oscilloscope, which is an analog voltmeter. When I was working in the field, I always had an oscilloscope and a digital voltmeter on my bench, and I always kept my oscilloscope set up like this, so I had a readily available analog voltmeter without having to have an extra piece of equipment on the bench. Now those of you who are familiar with oscilloscopes are probably thinking I'm nuts. And those of you who are just learning about this are probably saying, why bother having this big piece of equipment when all I need is a smaller analog meter? Well, of course, an oscilloscope is more than just an analog voltmeter. It is a time domain voltimeter. Well, nobody calls it that, but that's technically what you could call an oscilloscope. It tells us how voltage changes over time. Let me show how that works by going up to this knob. This is our time-based knob, and right now, this beam is sweeping from left to right across the screen so fast that all we see is a horizontal line. But I can slow that sweep down. Let's start doing that. Right now, we are set at 0.5 milliseconds per division. So each two of these lines is one one-thousandth of a second. So that's going across there pretty fast. Let's slow it down a bit. Starting to see some flickering there. Yeah, we can see it going from left to right now. And I'm going to slow it all the way down to where it's taking 10 seconds to go all the way across the screen. This apparently puts out a lot of infrared, and the digital cameras tend to be sensitive to infrared. And so this spot is looking on the camera much bigger than it looks on the screen. I'm going to crank down the intensity, and hopefully it won't be too much of a blotch on the screen. So there we have it. Make sure I can see it on the camera. Wait for it to start. One, two, three, and so on, taking 10 seconds to go across the screen. So what I can do now is see how voltage changes over time. So I'm going to take that 9 volt battery and hook it up. So here we go. 9 volts, 0 volts. 9 volts, 0 volts. 9 volts, 0 volts. 9 volts, 0 volts. So what you were seeing there is it would be 9 volts for one second, and zero volts for one second, so I could see as time went by how my voltage was changing. One time I worked at a company that made digital blood pressure meters, and part of the test I had to do was to make sure that seven seconds after it turned on, that a pulse was sent to a certain part of the circuit. So I set my oscilloscope to take 10 seconds to go across, and I would wait and turn on the blood pressure monitor at exactly when the beam started, and then I would watch to make sure I got that pulse at exactly seven seconds after the turn on. And I'm going to simulate that just using my 9-volt battery here. Let's go ahead and watch that and get ready. And here we go. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and boing, there's the pulse. And so that's what I was watching for. So there's one reason you might use an oscilloscope set to take such a long time to go across the screen. Now usually an oscilloscope is used to freeze time so you can observe things that happen much faster. So let's put something on here that is happening fast enough that we need to freeze the time. I have a function generator on top of the scope, and let's go ahead and hook that up. I have it set right now to take 10 seconds to cycle through a whole wave. We'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. I've just hooked up the function generator, and we see our voltage is going up and our voltage is going down. So it just went up to 5 volts, now it's going down. It is now at minus 5 volts, it's going up, just past 0. 
plus 5 volts, now it's going down to minus 5 volts, and it's taking 10 seconds to do one complete cycle, and it's taking 10 seconds to go across the screen. Now let's speed that up. Now I have it taking one second to do one cycle, so it's taking 10 seconds for the beam to go across the screen, or one second per vertical division. So I'm getting one cycle per division on the screen, and you can see that going across one second per cycle. Now let's crank that up to 10 cycles per second. Okay, that's happening just a little too fast to see, so let's adjust our time base. Let's change it to 0.2 seconds per division. So now every two divisions is one second. Let's set it to 0.1 second per division. Now it's taking one second to sweep across the screen, and we're seeing 10 cycles as it sweeps across the screen. Let's speed that up a little more. Let's take that up to 50 cycles per second. So this is the frequency standard for the power grid in most of the world, and things are happening so fast we just see a vertical line. So let's adjust our time base until we can see something happening on the screen. Let me crank up my intensity just a little bit here so we can be sure to see it. Don't want to crank it up too much because it'll blur on the camera. So now we see 50 cycles per second. Let me crank that up just a little more, and it's a little flickery. Now, it's one advantage of a digital scope is that it would freeze this and it wouldn't flicker, but I'm using this old analog oscilloscope just to show how oscilloscopes work. We'll look at digital oscilloscopes later. Okay, so now we have a picture of 50 hertz on the screen. This is a sine wave, by the way. We'll talk about wave shapes at another time, but this is what a sine wave looks like on the oscilloscope. Another important thing we can do with an oscilloscope is measure the time it takes for something to happen. And, for example, if we measure the time it takes to do one complete cycle of this wave, we can then take the reciprocal of that number and we have the frequency. So we have a 50 hertz wave on here. How do we measure that? So we start by looking at the screen and we want to get our most accurate measurement. So let's set it so we have one cycle on the screen. I'm going to just adjust my time base until I see one cycle. Let's crank up our intensity just a tad here so we can see it. A little bit of flicker there, but we can see it starting at that edge, ending at that edge. Let me make some adjustments to get it right on the edge and right where it's what I want to do is I want to make sure it's crossing the line at the very edge. I want to measure the part of the cycle here where we are crossing zero volts on our way up. We go back down and we cross zero volts on the way up again. And notice it's taking the entire screen, but we do have one complete cycle fit on the screen. Now I look at my time base. I'm set at two milliseconds. So that means each one of these vertical divisions is two milliseconds or two one thousandths of a second. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight. 20 milliseconds to complete one cycle. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of that, 0 0.02, take the reciprocal, and I got 50. So there's my 50 hertz on that screen. Let's do that again with the US standard of 60 hertz. There we have it. So once again, we're 2 milliseconds per division. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, just about 16.5 milliseconds. So let's calculate that out. 0 0.0165, take the reciprocal, and I got 60.6 hertz. Once again, this is an analog meter, so we have some interpolation issues here. And if I look real careful, yeah, that looks like a little more than 16.5. Uh, let's say 16.6. .6. So 0 0.0166, take the reciprocal, and I got 60.2. Well, it's actually 16.666 milliseconds for 60 hertz, so that's about as accurate as we can expect to be on an oscilloscope. So there you have it. That's the main way to use an oscilloscope. Of course, there's a lot more controls on here, a lot more things to talk about, but this video was just to give us a basic overview to understand how an oscilloscope works. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.